So in this paper, we um, basically ask whether there is a pricing difference between green and conventional bonds. And I will later have a slide on the concrete definition of a green bond, but I think most of you understand that the green bond is kind of related to sustainable projects. And this is simply the only difference between green and conventional bonds. So what we were wondering is that, um, are there any pricing implications of this label? So are green bonds um, uh, traded at lower yields than conventional bonds on, or the other way around? Or do investors um, see any difference at all or treat them, um, do they treat them differently or not? And while we were working on this paper and collecting all the data, another strand of story came up, namely credibility, because we have discovered that it's not only green label, um, but it's the whole green credibility of the issuer which matters. And I hope that by the end of my presentation, I can convince you or show you some results which um, indicate um, this relationship. So the market for green bonds has increased dramatically over the last couple of years. So I have here the data by the end of 2018. 2019 was another record year. I think by now we have um, also issuance volumes of around 150, 170 billion US dollar, and in total worldwide around 700, uh, yeah, 700 billion US dollar. So the market, green bond market is not a niche anymore. And um, both institutions, corporations, governments um, issue green bonds. So it's not only um, what the bonds are issued, not only by legal entities, governments, but also by corporations coming from very different sectors and around the world and also in many different currencies. Um, the only definition I have um, for green bonds is related to the use of proceeds, namely that um, the use or the money should go to sus sustainable projects and the definition of sustainable project might vary depending on the uh, green bond principles company use and pretty sure most of you have heard about the EU proposal um, on the green bond principles. We have um, uh, international green bond principles and also other principles related to green bonds, for instance, um, for issuances in China or South America or Africa. So what do we know from the literature on green bonds? Um, uh, there are many papers who found this. Um, when we talk about um, effects of the green bond on, or re relation of the issuance of green bonds and company, then we, or studies have found indeed positive <coughs> reputational effects. They are positive effects on stock prices, liquidity and institutional ownership. Um, the results on green bond pricing are however mixed. And I have here only few of studies, but you see already they are both sides. So we have studies which found that um, green bonds have lower yields than conventional bonds. I mean, we think of, in terms of prices, this means higher prices. Um, however, there are also studies who found the, exactly the opposite side, where they say, well, the difference is either not significant or um, the prices are even lower than for conventional bonds. Um, and this was kind of starting point for our study because we thought, well, um, why there are such differences? We have had a look on the samples. They differ significantly um, with respect, for instance, um, to the number of bonds they have considered. So most of the papers so far on the pricing of green bonds have around 100 to 200 green bonds. Um, by now, I think we have over 4,000 green bonds worldwide. So at least for us, it was clear, okay, making conclusions when you have just less than 10% of the sample um, can be difficult. 
The second problem we have um, sought or we have found is that um, none of the papers provided so f a full picture so far. So we have papers which use primary market data where we have a huge institutional demand and those papers usually find indeed higher prices for green bonds. Um, but we have also papers which consider secondary markets. The problem there is that um, you have many other effects and if you want to compare prices you need to match green bonds with comparable one, usually conventional bond, and this reduces significantly the sample. So how do we contribute to the existing literature? Our first contribution is that we have collected a large sample of green bonds worldwide, so we have in total over 2,000 green bonds and also over 200,000 uh, 200, conventional bonds to compare prices. And the main question I already mentioned is um, um, the difference in yields or difference in prices. Thereby we talk and also other studies and also newspapers, if you read something related to green bond premium, um, we define this as a negative differential between yields. So we say if, if the yield for green bonds is below the yield for conventional bond, then the bond, the green bond is traded to the premium. And in the other case, we say the bond is traded at the discount. So what we do in our papers, we at least try to provide a full picture by considering um, or comparing different markets. So we have primary and secondary market data. We also consider different subsamples to disentangle such effects and to see whether there are any differences. And finally, we reveal the importance of credibility. And credibility, um, I will show you later, we have different measures for that. But in general speaking, we, or at least this is our main sentence, of the paper, it's not the green label, it's the overall sustainable reputation of the company which matters to investors. So to summarize our findings, um, on the primary markets we indeed find higher prices for green bonds, so we have a difference in yields of around 24 basis points. However, we see significant variation across subsamples. And this goes again in our story of the credibility because we say um, there might be currencies out there which are more credible, more reliable. So for instance, we um, find higher prices for bonds issued in US dollar or, the, or European uh, markets, but we have no significant difference for Chinese green bonds. Also across issuer types, we find a significant difference um, here again governments, supranational, so more credible entities, when they issue bonds, they are usually traded at higher prices, while when we compare corporations or corporate green bonds, many of those bonds um, do not have a premium or do not trade at a premium. We see also a variation across time, I, I will not talk about this, but there are months or there are time periods where the premium is more significant or higher and the time, time, periods of time where we do not find any differences. Most interesting result, um, or at least what I think, is that when we have the same sample and have a look on the prices on the secondary market, then the situation reverses. Suddenly the green bonds which have been so attractive on the primary markets trade at lower prices. And this was our first moment where we thought, how can it be? So what happens on the way? So what we do find here is that green bonds trade at the discount. So if we have a full sample, we see a difference of around 14 um, basis points. And if we again have a closer look and say, well, how does it look when we have only government bonds or only um, corporate bonds, they will again see the difference. So for government bonds, we see a small premium, it's very small, around three basis points, while for corporates, we see a huge discount. 
Um, and it, for the secondary market analysis, we include these credibility indicators or um, variables. And this is where we indeed see that the additional credibility, for instance, um, third party certification or experience of the, um, of the issuer, listing of the green bond, this all improves the credibility or the overall credibility of this label and improves also the pricing. So I have 10 minutes left, but I think I already presented my main results, so I don't have to spend time on the methods. So for our primary market analysis, we have uh, limited our sample to, uh, to plain vanilla bonds. We follow the literature, we regress the yield um, at issuance on a green dummy variable and have different controls which are usual and have also some green credibility <coughs> variables. So what do we find here? I hope this works. So this is our main result I already mentioned. Bonds um, which have a green label trade at 24 basis points, lower yields and the three models um, distinguish themselves um, by different um, fixed effects we included. So the full model is here where we have everything possible, including issue co um, country um, fixed effects. The I skipped the last two columns um, also because they are numbers. So the relationship is intuitive where we say, well, experience plays a role. We have a reduction in the yield to maturity, but the numbers are not significant. Um, interesting result here in the first two columns, um, subsamples based on currencies. So we see particular differences between do we see it? US dollar and Euro pin, and we have no difference for Chinese bonds. This might be again a reputation story because um, they are different. Um, green bonds principle standards, Chinese bonds do not have to align the, with European standards. Um, there are differences, I don't have time to explain this more, but this might be an explanation why um, there is no significant difference. The main and interesting result, I think, is in the model five and six, where you see we have a huge premium for government bonds and supranational bonds or bonds issued by that, such companies while we have non-significant, so we have no difference between green and conventional bonds issued by corporations. Um, what we have recently included is the effect of certification for corporations because this is where all, mostly people ask, so why didn't you look further? Why, what is the explanation that corporate green bonds do not have a premium? And we have more results here, but I skip this in for the sake of time. But you see already here, so again, it's not significant, but you see the third party certification improves the credibility of the green bond issued by um, corporates and also um, the size. So particularly large corporate bonds appear to be more attractive or maybe because investors think, well, with this size, the impact is higher, so the, um, the, we see also the difference or the effect on the prices. Um, so for secondary market analysis, the difficulty is that we need all these trading prices every day and not all bonds are traded every day and we need also conventional bonds. So here we restricted our sample only to such bonds or to such issues which have both types of bonds. And this, this is indeed kind of difficult because they are issues which have only green bonds and of course not all issues have con um, conventional bonds and vice versa. So in the end we have our sample is around 780 green bonds and I will, if I have time, explain to you later how we match them. So here we have two analyses. The first one is exactly the same as for the primary market because here we wanted to see the difference between these two. Um, so we regress the yield to maturity on the dumb variable green. And for the second analysis, we try to, or in the second analysis, we try to explain this difference in yields 
So we consider the differences in yields of matched pairs. So we have a green bond and a matched conventional bond. And this matched conventional bond is a bond of exactly the same company with everything what can be matched exactly the same, but maturity and issue size. And there we try to be as close as possible. Um, so here, are two tables with results. And this is our main result for the secondary market. And you see, this is where these 14 basis points come from. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that um, obviously the uh, green bonds lose their attra attraction. Um, we try to explain this. We don't see any significant difference <coughs> between currencies. But again, if you have a look on the issuer types, there again we see, well, um, government supranational sovereign bonds trade at a premium, um, corporate bonds trade at a huge discount. And we have some samples here. I skip this because I think the most relevant table for at least for a title with credibility story um, is this table where we try to explain the difference in yields by including different credibility variables. And the first one is the green exchange. So these are um, exchanges with a dedicated green bond market. So for instance, in Europe, it's Luxembourg, one of the largest one. Um, we have in, Lon in London a green bond uh, exchange and also in Frankfurt most, more recently. And you see that um, bonds which listed on such exchanges trade at higher prices. We have um, up to 13 basis points higher prices, uh, lower yields for such bonds. And this again uh, goes in our direction because most of such exchanges require that green bonds have additional um, certification that they do align with some principles and so on. So th these exchanges um, improve transparency and also visibility for the market. Um, so what is also interesting is this certification I already mentioned, but our most recent result um, is the effect of the overall sustainability rating of the issuer. So our sample is still small. We are now um, extending this, but you see already these two effects. So what we have done here is we split the issuers based on the environmental rating. So we don't took, uh, take the um, ESG, we took just the E, because this is more related to green. And you see that bonds which have higher top 30% E-rating, they trade at seven basis points lower yields, while bonds which are issued by companies with a very bad E-reputation, they have indeed um, lower prices. And this is actually the, the main result or the main relation to our title. And this is also what I took from um, many talks with practitioners because they asked me why should we take a green bond from a company uh, with a very bad reputation. We usually go top-down approach. So it's, the decision is first about the company and then about the instrument and not the other way around. Um, and so our results fit nicely to this story. And um, I have just one slide on the summary, but I think the main take um, away is, sh should be clear by now. Thank you very much. <laughs>